I welcome you back to the Debrinic Channel and today I have a lot on my plate. I have some very interesting things at the California Aqueduct at the end of the show and I want to thank everybody who participated in the music. As you can hear it stays. Last time I looked it was 62%. I'm sorry to the people that really have a hard time hearing that. It's frustrating because do I do it? Do I not? I put a poll out. 62% of you like it? I'm sorry to the other people who don't and can't find balance so I don't know what to do I gotta go with the majority here the majority rules if you guys want to get on on that poll just go over to the community and if things change I'll, I'll switch it up but if you like the music that's great we're going to be talking about Lake Mead like I promised every Wednesday and every Sunday and I got an interesting comment this morning from Matthew Lund he said hello from Lake Powell and I'm sorry if I butchered your name I can't find the numbers on where Glen Cannon Dam will stop producing electricity. Any help would be appreciated. And I had to really dig, but I found what I was looking for. So check this graph out right here. This graph right here says that the maximum water surface is usually around 3,711. That's the maximum water surface. And the top of the elevation is 3,715 feet, just in case anybody didn't know. 3,700 is generally the normal water surface, but not lately. 3,490 minimum water level for power generation. The pin stocks right here, as you can see, this is the pin stock, and then the elevation is 3,140. The maximum tailwater elevation is 3,183 to the power plant, and that's where the water is discharged. And I found this graph, and I'll leave the link below just in case anybody wants to come over and look for it yourself. Today's numbers at Lake Powell are 3,557.50, and this was Tuesday, July 13th, so it was yesterday, 2021, at 12 a.m. The level is 142.50 feet below full pool of 3,700, what we just talked about. And the water level has dropped 0.24, so over 2 inches today. And here's the scary part. Today we're at 3,557.5. Two years ago we were at 3,619.41 feet. Today we're at 3,557.50 feet. That means in a two year span we lost 61.91 feet. You take 3,557.5 and the water level is 3,490 before the power gets cut off. That leaves a total of 67.5 feet away from no more power being generated there either. Wow, we live in some scary times. This is crazy. All right, we're gonna roll over to Lake Mead and check out the water levels there as well. Lake Mead water level. The current water level is 1,067.86, so we are approximately 17.86 feet away from losing some of the turbines. They have a few that will make it to 950. We'll see when that will happen. This was taken Wednesday, July 14, 2021 at 4 p.m. The level is 161.14 feet below full pool and it continues to be a historic low. It didn't quite make the two inch mark today, but it was still 0.11 feet. Full pool, of course, being 1,229 feet. MSL stands for means sea level. Let's go check out the weather and see what's going on in the next 10 days. Hopefully some rain will be on the way. We'll check it out. As usual, we are at windy.com and don't forget I got the aqueduct information coming up here just in a bit. So stick with me for a few minutes here. Grand Junction, 82 degrees. Las Vegas, 100. 102 in Fresno, California. So it's still hot out here. Salt Lake City, 89. And there is some rain, especially over here by Flagstaff, coming within the next three days, they say. We'll go to the next five real quick here. Lights up. Check out Flagstaff. We're just right around Flagstaff. Two inches they're expecting. That's good news. 0 0.87. Not a whole lot in the Colorado. 0 0.85. 5.6. Just a little bit. I mean, anything's better than nothing. This will generally run because it's coming quick it's not good for the drought we need a good soaker next 10 days kind of lights up a little bit check this out down here two inches down here flagstaff will be getting in on this three inches there's like a big swath from here to here even over here in vegas las vegas gonna get a half inch up here 5.7 over here 1.36 down here the lake may come up some i'm not holding my breath but it may We'll just have to wait and see and of course over here by lake orville as we scoot in over here by lake orville the next 10 days uh zero so there you have it the wildfires are crazy as you know here's some pictures of that and check out this right here 
This here is from Oregon. You can clearly see this thing was blazing up, and this is from NOAA's satellite picture. Really crazy, crazy. Now let's go over and talk about the aqueduct system. So here's a map of the California aqueduct system. You can see some of it comes from the Colorado River and some of it's coming from the Central Valley and then over here the Los Angeles aqueduct also. So we have all this going on and then you get your local groundwater. Now you may be asking yourself, why does California lose so much water to evaporation? Hypothesis, the inability of California state water project canals to transfer water effectively due to evaporation. They lose a ton of water every year. Costs the state considerable amounts of value water losses each day. There are cost effective methods of conserving the water loss from evaporation each year that California could implement, but yeah. But guess what? They do not. And that is a bad, bad situation. Now, I did see that they are talking about putting solar panels over this aqueduct system to prevent evaporation. And it will definitely help because the sun won't be beaten down on it. But, you know, researchers say that it works in India. I'm not sure if it does or if it doesn't. That's what I heard. And also, they say that it's going to produce 13 gigawatts of power. That is just crazy. It will also save 60 billion gallons of water as well. So if that's really the case, it doesn't sound bad. But they say they're going to do a promo type before they ever do the whole thing. They want to see if it really does work. I'm not sure how they're going to study the evaporation loss there. And I guess they could go by humidity, I suppose. I'm not sure how they go about that. If anybody does know, let me know. And opponents of this say that what if the canal needs repaired? How are you going to get to it with solar panels over the top? And what if somebody gets hurt and there's an emergency underneath the canal? Somebody is drowning or something. How are you going to get to them? Those are extremely valid points. And if you guys have valid points and you guys want to join the conversation below, I try to get to most of them. I can't get to all of them, but please be civil. I really enjoy the positive messages that have come through. Also, these are my own thoughts, my own opinion. I never claim to be an expert, just in case you guys were wondering. I do my best to report on it. I do my research. Sometimes I'm wrong, and if I'm wrong, if we're civil about it, we can get through it. There was a guy that corrected me on the irrigation in Illinois. He said that there was the reason why they irrigate near the river is because it's a sand bottom which I'm from Illinois, so I had no idea that there was a sand bottom there. I seen that irrigation along the rivers before, and I was thinking to myself, why would they be doing that except for maybe to increase yields? I was completely wrong, and he corrected me, and he was nice about it, and he thought he was being rude were his words, and I didn't think that whatsoever. He was pretty civil about it. He said he liked me. I was wrong, and he explained why I was wrong. If you can do that in a nice way, that would be great. So on Sunday, we will be talking about the billions of gallons that just get washed into the ocean every year by California and I have a lot of information on that. I've been doing a lot of homework lately. If there's something you guys want, suggest it down in the comments below. And with that, you guys have a blessed day. We'll see you on the next one. God bless.